All right, we are going to be doing vectors, starting vectors. So, vectors. Um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding vectors together, putting them together, finding the final displacement, final place where it is. So, representing vectors. Now, first thing is, remember that vectors means it has a magnitude and a direction. The magnitude is the number, 60 miles. The direction is, what direction is it going? 60 miles to the east, or whatever it is. So when we represent vectors, we draw arrows. So all vectors will be arrows. Whichever way the arrow is pointing, that is the direction that the vector is going in. So if I draw a vector like this, 10 km, what does that tell what does that vector tell me? It goes 10 kilometers, going 10 kilometers which way? West. West. Okay? So the arrow does matter. The direction matters. Whichever way you have your vector drawn matters. How long the vector is. So if I had a 10 kilometer vector like this, going this way, I wouldn't want to, I would not want to do 5 kilometers like that. Because that's not a representation of five. If this is ten, this is not five. Right? That can't be right. So if I were going to do five, I would want to try to draw it half as long as that one and make it five kilometers. Bless you. Okay? So that's just the bare minimum of putting drawing a vector. Now, when I start putting the vectors together, adding them, I can do it two ways. I can add them by graphing them, or I can add them algebraically. So, next thing we're going to do is, I'm going to change colors to an actual different color, not just a different shade of blue, is I'm going to do... adding vectors. So when I'm adding vectors, like I said, there's two ways to do it. The first way we're going to do it is graphically. I'm going to add them graphically. Now when we add them graphically, we're just drawing a graph. Now when I do it graphically, when you draw the vectors, they go head to tail. So when I add, let's say that I have A, this is vector A, this is vector B, and that C, let's say the C is longer, and that's D. Okay, I'm just, hopefully... All right, so if I want to do A plus B, if I'm doing vector A plus B, I'm going to draw A first, and then I'm going to draw B after that. So when I draw A, there's A. I hope I'm not disturbing y'all talking back there. So there's vector A. Vector B starts where vector A stops. Okay? If I'm drawing vector B, I do not draw vector B over here. Even though it's going south, I don't start it over here. Vector B has to start at the end of vector A. The tail of vector B starts at the head of vector A. So it's going to go down like that. Okay? I don't know how long these things are. But I do, this is all I have is the pictures of them. What I do to finish off is I do a dotted line from where I started from 
to where I finish up. So I started here. I finished down here. I'm going to move this up some so people can see it. Started here down there. This is the R. The R is always the finish. It is called, that is the resultant vector. That is the result of doing A and B. So if you walk here and then you walk there, your result is you walk really from here to there. The distance that you walked is not the same as your displacement. Your displacement is straight line distance. How far is it straight line? If you had a helicopter, it could go up, go across, land straight down. How far did you go? Okay, if I do C. Now, here's the other thing. Does it matter if I do A plus B or B plus A? It doesn't matter what order I put them in. I'm still going to end up in the same spot. If I did B plus A, if I did B plus A, B goes down, A goes across, I would still end up in that same spot. I would still have that same resultant vector. Okay. All right. So if I do uh, D plus C. Let's just do that. D plus C. I'm not going to try to, I'm not going to do any tricky subtraction. Subtraction just means you have to flip it. So if I did negative C, that would, instead of C going up, it would go down. Okay, so I'm going to draw D first. There's D. And then I draw C from where that one stops. C goes up like that. My resultant would go from where I started from to where I ended up. That's my R. That's my resultant. Okay, I can put three or four of them together. And I would get, sometimes they kind of go sideways and up and down and all that stuff, and you kind of end up with a dotted line. It doesn't matter as long as your displacement is where you started from to where you ended up. That's doing it graphically. That's all fine and dandy because you're going to have to know how to draw the pictures. But we're not going to be doing a whole lot of adding vectors graphically. We're going to be adding vectors algebraically. Yes. So I know you're excited. Yeah. Anytime you hear the word, word algebraically, it's got to get you. It's got to get the blood pumping. So algebraically. If we are adding them algebraically, you're going to have to know some numbers. Okay? So when we're adding them algebraically, what they're going to do is they may still have the vectors, and I may still have the same ones. I may still have some A vector going like this, and I may still have a B vector going down like that, and I may still have a C vector going way up here like this, and I may still have a small D vector like that. But now what they're going to do is they're going to start giving me numbers. So maybe this one is uh, 8 miles. This one is 9 miles. This one is 15 miles. And this one is uh, 4 miles. Okay. I'm still going to call this vector A. This vector B, this is vector C, and this is vector D. I'm still calling them the same thing. But now I've got numbers with them so I can add them algebraically. So when I start doing, let's go A plus C. So if I do A plus C, I'm going to draw A. 
I'm going to draw C where A stops. So A is going to come across here like this. There's A. C is going to go way up here like this. And my resultant would be up across like this. That's my resultant of those. Now, when I'm adding algebraically, that's fine and dandy. I've got a picture. But now they want to know what is R. What is R? That's what I'm trying to find. Well, I know that this one coming across here is 8. I know this one going up and down is 15. This one was A and that one was C. And I want to find R. So I've got to do two things. First thing I've got to do is I've got to find out how long is this. So I've got to do Pythagorean theorem to find that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do 8 squared plus 15 squared equals to R squared. Pythagorean theorem. Good old Pythagorean theorem. Oh, we thought you were gone and done with. So if I do 8 squared plus 15 squared and take the square root of it, what do I get? Um, you get, you get 17. 17 what? Miles. Miles. If these are all in miles, when you do Pythagorean theorem, this is going to be in miles. This is going to have the same units as all of the things that you started with. 17 miles. That is the first part of the resultant vector. That's the magnitude part. The magnitude part is the number part. The second part of my answer is, what direction is it going in? Okay? And you cannot go northeast. It's not northeast. Why is it not northeast? Because this is 8 and this is 15. That's not northeast. It's just plain north. If it was northeast, it would be 8 and 8. That would be northeast. Northeast is a 45 degree angle. So this is not a 45 degree angle. You can't call it northeast. So what I've got to do is I've got to find that angle. Okay. So how did you get how did you get 17 right there? Eight squared plus 15 squared, and I took the square root of it. Oh, I took the square root. Can't you also do the the square root of eight squared plus 15 squared? The square root of eight squared plus 15 squared on the calculator? Yeah. All under the same square root? That's what I just did. Yeah. He did that. He just did it in two different steps. Yeah, I just. Yeah, it's the same thing. Okay, so now when I do this, this is the angle that I want to find. I'm going to call it theta. That's what you usually call them. So you'll usually see a little theta symbol. It's a circle with a little squiggle in it. That's theta. Greek symbols. This is opposite side. This is the adjacent side. This is the hypotenuse. That's what I'm looking for. I already found the hypotenuse is 17. But here's the thing. I did not know the hypotenuse. I found the hypotenuse. So do not use the 17 when you're trying to find the angle. Because if you miss this part and you use this to find the angle, you're going to automatically miss the angle. Because you used the wrong answer to find another answer. If you use the wrong answer to find another answer, it, the next answer is wrong. Automatic. Doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter if you do everything right. It's still wrong. If you use, use the wrong number. Okay? So, when I do this, opposite adjacent, I'm going to use sine, cosine, tangent. So, sine, cosine, tangent. So, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Thank you. Yeah, we used like two of those. <laughs> but yeah, I, I whopped them off. We always whop them off before we put them in. 
Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. Okay, those are what those stand for. Now remember, you're always putting the angle next to sine, cosine, tangent. So it's really cosine theta, sine theta, tangent theta. Sine, cosine, tangent. You know me. No, it's not OPP. So one of them's opposite, right? Opposite, yeah. It is OPP, but it's opposite. So it's an additive? Yes. You down with OPP? Yeah, you know me. Okay, so now, when we're doing this, this is the opposite, this is adjacent. Most of the time, we're going to be using tangent. So when I do this, I'm going to be doing tan theta equals to opposite over adjacent. Opposite side is 15. Adjacent side is 8. So I want to find the angle. Now, when I'm trying to find the actual angle, I've got to do, when I put it on the calculator, tan inverse. So tan negative 1. 15 over 8. Push enter. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode. If you do 15 over 8 inverse tan and it ends up point something or another, you're not in degree mode. What is that, sir? How do you get the tan again? You do the trig. You do the trig. What's that, sir? Theta. That's it. Yeah, it should end up, yes. How do you put that in the calculator? Should be in degree mode. Yes, it should end up at 61.93 if I round it off to two decimal places. Why is it negative? It's not negative. Or why is it tan negative? Because I'm trying to find the angle. Because I'm trying to find the angle. So, if you already know the angle, like if this was tan 27 equal to something, something, then you would just use tan 27. It would be next to the tan. All right, so this is at... 61.93 degrees. And now I've got to figure out how do I want to label this. So it is 61.93 degrees. What of what? This is north of east. It is touching the line east. If I draw a little coordinate system over here on the end, if I draw a little coordinate system, whichever line the triangle is actually touching, that's the second part. To get to get up here, it's not north by northeast because that would be a that's a certain angle. So this line is touching east. So this is my coordinate system. It is on east. It's touching the east. That's the second part. Now, to get to where I'm ended up, I have to go up, which is north. So I'm going north of the, where I started, which was on east. I'm going north of where I started, which was east. North of east is where I went. Okay? Okay. There we go. That is A plus C. Now let's do a different one so we can get a different angle and try it again. All right, so let's do let's do B plus D. B plus D. Now, using the same vectors that I used before. B goes 9 down. D, actually I should put that on the other side. 9 down. D goes 4 backwards. It goes 4 to the west. My resultant comes down like that. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is, the easiest part of this is using the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to do Pythagorean theorem, 4 squared plus 9 squared take the square root of it. So first thing I'm going to do is 4 squared plus 9 squared equals R squared. I'm going to take the square root of that, and I'm going to get the answer. So 16 plus 81, take the square root of it. I got 9.85. 9.85. Okay. Now, this was all in miles, so this is still in miles. At. That's the easy part. The Pythagorean theorem part of it, y'all will be able to do. The angle part. The angle part is not that hard. It's just got to be, what do we do at the end? So where did I start from? I started up here. So I'm looking for this angle up here. So now this one is the opposite and this one is the adjacent. So I'm going to do inverse tan, opposite over adjacent. Well, 4 over 9. 4 and a 9 divide second 10. And I get 23.96 degrees. The last thing I want to do is what of what? Okay, let me draw my little coordinate system where I started from. Which line is it actually going down? South. It's going down south. So that's the second part. So it's something of south. Oh. And which way do I have to go to get over to the end? West. I have to go west. So this is west of south. Did you say negative east? No. Oh. <laughs> so this is 23.96 degrees west of south. Now that's one way to measure it. The other way to measure it is if you use from the beginning. This is 90 degrees straight up. 180 degrees is straight over here. 270 degrees is straight down. So I went almost straight down, but not quite. I, so I'd have to do 270 would be straight down. Minus the 23.96 that I didn't quite get over there. And if I do 270 minus 23.96, I get... 246.04 degrees. Now, that is not nothing of nothing. It's 246.04 degrees. That is 23.96 degrees west of south. Those two things are exactly the same thing. They are written differently. Okay, so sometimes you will see the answers written like this. Sometimes you will see the answers written like this. Those two things are exactly the same. Okay, so if, like I said, this is what the graph, this is what the coordinate system looks like. This is 90 degrees up here. 180 degrees would be straight to the west. 270 degrees would be straight south. Zero degrees is straight to the east. So if I was at 135 degrees, 135 degrees over here would be 45 degrees over here. It would be northwest. That you could call northwest because it's a 45 degree angle. But there's no such thing as 32 degrees northwest. It's 32 degrees north of west. Okay? That's adding vectors. Algebraically, that's going to be one of the harder things that we do. Okay, so here comes our... Mr. Henderson? Yes. Do you have John Paul Reyna? Yes, I do. Could you send him to the office, please? Okay. Thank you. Okay, we are 
going to work a lot of these together. So, let's start with number one. That's a good place to start. A car is driven 125 kilometers due west, then 65 kilometers due south. What is the magnitude of the displacement? Now, let me tell you this. This one is only asking for magnitude. Magnitude is just the number part. But for practice, we're going to do the whole thing. Okay? We're going to do the angle and the other part. This is only asking for magnitude, so you really are, we're not required to do the angle, but I'm going to do the angle just so we can keep practicing so people will know how to do it. Okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a picture. Always start with a picture. Okay, so they drive 125 to the west. Then they turn and go 65 south. Okay, so my resultant is right there. All right, so now the first part that I'm going to do is I'm going to do Pythagorean theorem to find out what R is. So on my calculator, I'm going to type in 65 squared plus 125 squared, and then I'm going to take the square root of that answer. Or I can just do like Trey said. I can do the square root and then do 125 squared plus 65 squared and push enter. Okay. 140.89, and this is in? Uh, kilometers. kilometers. Okay. If this was actually answering the question, I could stop right there. Because it only asks for the magnitude. That's the magnitude. But we are going to do the angle. Now, where did I start from? I started up here. Okay? I drew this one, and then I drew this one. This is where I stopped. This is where I started. So this is the angle that I'm looking for. Whichever angle you started at, that's the angle you're looking for. So opposite is... The 65, the adjacent is the 25. You still have O and A. Like I said, it's almost always tangent. Okay, so OA is 10, so 65 over 125. And I'm looking for the angle, so I'm going to do tan inverse. So I'm going to do inverse tangent of 65 over 125. Twenty-seven. 27 Point four seven degrees. What of what? Okay. Which? Okay. Let me draw my coordinate system. Which one is it actually touching? It's touching west. So that's the second part. Which way do you have to go? South. south. So this is south of west. Now. That's one way to write it. Now let's write it. We're using the regular, just an angle. All right. So if I look at this, it is a little bit south of west. Well, west is how many degrees? If I go straight to the west, that's 180 degrees. But I went past that. How many degrees did I go past it? 27.47. So if I do 180 plus 27.47... I get 207.47 degrees. And again, if I have 207.47 degrees, I don't have to put south of west. This tells me where the angle is. Just the number. Toby, put your phone up. So either one of those, same answer. All right. Numero dos. Mm -hmm. This is just asking for the magnitude, so no angle, right? Yeah, but we're still going to do the angle. Uh, we're going to do, oh, I'm not going to spend as much time on the angles like I have been. We're going to start going faster and faster. Okay, number two. A shopper 
walked from the door of the mall to her car 250 meters down the lane of the cars, turns 90 degrees to the right, and walks an additional 60 meters. What is the magnitude and the direction of her from... What is the magnitude of the displacement? Okay, we're just going to do the magnitude because it doesn't give us directions. It just says down and to the right. So, I mean, I'm going to assume down is south, but, I mean, how do I know that down is not down the aisle that way? I mean, it's just, it's down there. It's over there. It's So, I'm going to draw it actually down like south, but who, who knows what it really is. So this person walks 250 meters down. Okay, so if I am facing this way, because I'm walking south, I'm walking down on my paper, and I turn to the right, then I am going to be going this way, which is west. Right? So if I'm walking down and I turn to the right, this is down. This was 250 meters down. This one is 60. Yes, it is. So there is my resultant right there. Like I said, we're not going to find the angle because it truly doesn't give us directions. It just says down. So I'm going to do 250 squared plus 60 squared. And then I'm going to take the square root of that. And it is 257.099, which is 0.1. And that is in meters. That is my magnitude. Now, if I had to find the directions, I'd do inverse tangent, 60 over 250. And it would be something, something. West of south on my picture. Okay, but I'm not going to do that. Okay, third, number three. A walker walks 4.5 uh, kilometers in one direction, makes a 45 degree turn to her right, and walks another 6.4 kilometers. What is the magnitude of her displacement? Okay. It doesn't say which direction she's walking, so I'm going to make her go to the east. Okay, so she's going to walk 4.5 kilometers this way. She's going to make a 45 degree turn. So here's my, here's the end. There's my coordinate system. If she makes a 45 degree turn, which way is she going to be walking? She's going to be walking this way okay and she's going to walk 6.4 kilometers my resultant is this this thing coming across here is that a right triangle no, no. if it is not a right triangle you cannot use Pythagorean theorem so you cannot do 4.5 squared plus 6.4 squared, take square root of it and be done. So what I have to do is I have to actually use vectors. I've got to split this up. How big is this angle right here? What did they say it was? 45 degrees. This is a hypotenuse. It's 6.4. I need to find out what is that piece going in the x direction what is this piece going in the y direction? Okay, they are, we're going to break this vector up into its components. The components are what are the x and the y's that make the total vector? So x and y. Okay. Now, here's my hypotenuse. This time, I'm not going to be using tangent because I know the hypotenuse. I'm going to be using sine and cosine. Okay, here's my 45. Here's the opposite over there. There is the adjacent up there. This is the hypotenuse right there. Notice I'm not doing anything with 4.5. That's completely different. I'm just going to save it for later. It's going to sit over there on the side. Ain't nobody care about it. So if... 
I'm looking for the adjacent, and I know the hypotenuse. Which one of them has A and H? Ka. Ka. Cosine. <laughs> so, cosine of the angle, well, how big is my angle? 45 degrees. Equals to adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, hypotenuse is 6.4. If the X is on top, to find the answer, you're going to multiply. So X is going to equal 6.4 cosine 45. Number first, cosine stuff second. So I'm going to do 6.4 times the cosine of 45. And I'm going to get X equals to 4.53. Okay, so this piece going across the top is 4.53. I've still got to find the Y. So now I've got to find the Y. Well, Y is opposite. Opposite hypotenuse. Opposite and hypotenuse is sine. Sine of the angle. The angle is still 45 degrees. Opposite is the y. Adjacent, uh, hypotenuse is 6.4. Y is on the top. If what you're looking for is on top, you're going to multiply. 6.4 sine 45. 6.4 times the sine of 45 is 4.53. 45 degree angles are the only angles that give you the same X and Y. If it was 43 degrees, you would not have the same X and Y. They'd be close, but they're not going to be the same. Now, now I have a big right triangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw my triangle where I don't have this stuff going through the middle of it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my right triangle like this. Like that. How far across the top does this person walk? Nine... Point oh three. Four point five plus four point five three. They walked four point five here. They walked four point five three there. The total across the top is nine point oh three. How far down did they walk? Four point five three. Now, once I have my triangle, now I'm ready to go and do Pythagorean theorem. So 9.03 squared plus 4.53 squared. Ten. Take the square root of that. It is 10.1. And that is in kilometers. Now, if I had to find the angle, I could. I would do inverse tangent 4.53 over 9.03. Oh, don't worry. There's plenty of questions that are way longer than these. Okay, 26.64 degrees. This would be 26.64 degrees. What of what? This is... Which line is it touching? It's touching east. And which way do you have to go? South of east. So this would be at 26.64 degrees south of east. The other way that I could do it would be 360 minus 26.64. This is way too much. Let me reiterate again. This is the hardest class that you will have ever taken. Okay? You can get out. I'm not to. I'm not to. I know. 333.36 degrees. 
You don't have to. Any other science? So you think Earth is high? I'm not trying to be God, though. I'm trying to get regular physics. Okay, yep. If you do 26.64 degrees, you have to do south of east. I'm not built for this class. It's not for everybody. I'm just. I told y'all in the beginning this would be the hardest class you ever take. Huh? Hey, Kendall, how'd you find that 26.64 again? I did inverse tangent of 4.53 over 9.03. Why do you use the negative? Opposite over adjacent. Why do we use the negative tangent? Why? Yeah, why? To so find to the four. When are we going to use the positive? Will we ever use the positive? Tangent? We just did. When we did these. When we did cosine and sine, we used the positive one. Oh. Okay. Number four. What is the magnitude? We got four minutes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll wait. Okay, stop. We'll. I saw me.